Hello, I'm JW. Uh, this time I'm going to have a look at Steel Conduit. And uh, there'll be several videos on this, so I'm going to do it in a number of parts. There's quite a lot to cover. And uh, what we're talking about here is uh, the heavy duty stuff as used in the UK. For those people who live in America, this is not EMT. This is uh, pretty substantial stuff. You're not going to be bending this with your fingers or much else other than the actual machine in question. Now, of course, this is just a short piece I've cut off for demonstration purposes. And this time we're going to have a look at the sort of basic uh, principles of it, the sort of tools you would need, and the various components that go with it, aside from the actual stuff itself. Now, here have got a piece of the conduit. This is just a short piece that I've uh, cut off of the full length. When you actually buy this, it normally comes in lengths of around 3 metres long, sometimes 3.75 metres, depending on who actually manufactured it. And this particular one is 20 millimetres in diameter, so it's the outer diameter of the conduit there. That's probably the most common size. Also you can get 25 millimetres, which again is a fairly common choice. And normally of course you'd use the larger ones for either having more wires inside or larger wires. And although it doesn't sound like there's much difference between 20 and 25, in terms of the actual space inside, there is actually quite a significant difference between those. So 20 or 25 by far the most common. In theory you can get a 16, although that's a fairly unusual item and you'd have to really make a big effort to actually find some. And there are bigger sizes as well, starting with 32 millimetres and then 40 and various sizes above that. But again, they're not particularly common, but they do have their uses. Now this particular piece is uh, galvanised, hence it's got this uh, shiny finish on there. And again, that's a fairly common choice. Uh, the other common choice is black, which is uh, kind of enamel paint on there. Exactly the same size and dimensions, and it's made of the same steel. just has a black painted finish rather than this uh, galvanised one we've got here. Now, uh, say so when you buy this, it comes in uh, big long lengths of normally about three metres, and it's generally supplied with the ends already threaded. So there's a thread cut on the end here, and of course uh, the other end as well. But if you're going to be doing anything with conduit, cutting it up is going to be inevitable. And if you're going to actually cut it, in order for it to fit into pretty much anything, it is necessary to cut a thread onto the end that you've actually cut. And then the other thing you're going to have to do is to make some bends in the conduit, and then you can have things, say, like this. And of course you will need a bending machine to do this. Unlike the EMT or the thin wall stuff, which is quite common in North America, you're not going to be bending this with your hands or fingers. It's simply far too robust and solid for that. This is made of steel and the wall thickness here is actually 1.6 millimetres, so it is a pretty substantial material. Not sort of thing that's going to get damaged easily, dented or bent out of shape without the proper tools. Now once you've cut the conduit to whatever length you want, you will of course need to thread the ends of it. And to do this you'll need a threading tool. Here's a fairly typical example. This is one that can do uh, both 20 and 25 millimetre threads. And you just change the thread by simply undoing these nuts here. And then you can just remove the actual cutting die here, which is the uh, 20 millimetre one. And then this piece is a guide which basically fits over the conduit there just to make sure it's straight with respect to the cutting piece. So uh, just swap those over. These are all metric, so this is an M20, and of course the 25mm one is an M25. So we'll just put that uh, back together there. Thread pitch on these is 1.5mm, so in other words for every one rotation it moves along by 1.5mm. So if you wanted, say, 15 millimetres of thread, which is about the usual sort of amount, then that's actually 10 turns of the handle. And in terms of using these, then, the conduit will be secured in a vice, and then you simply place the tool over the end, you see that guy just fits over there to keep it straight. And then it's a question of rotating the handle, and that will cut the thread into the end as required. And so we'll look at threading, of course, in more detail at a later time. Now, as well as the conduit itself, there are various things which go with this. And uh, first of which are these actual boxes. Now, these are made of a cast material. It's some sort of cast iron. It says malleable on the back there. And again, as with the conduit, these are heavy-duty substantial items. You can see the considerable wall thickness there on this particular box. Being cast, these do tend a fairly sort of rough-looking finish. And again, these are galvanised as well as with the uh, conduit we've got here. And just as with the conduit, you can buy these in the black painted finish as well. In terms of using them, there's really no difference. It's just purely a uh, different finish on the outside. 
Now one thing about threading is once you've cut a thread, if you leave it exposed, this is the uh, factory cut end here, then it will actually go rusty if left in the air because of course the galvanised coating has been removed there. Now the boxes at the end like these ones are of course already threaded and in terms of uh, using these there's a whole variety of these available. Uh, I've got a selection of different ones here, just four of these. This is just a single outlet here or a terminal box. There's a T-shaped one there, so a right angle there and this is like a U-box or something for the shape of that. There's actually a whole load of these which we don't have here. Pretty much any combination you can think of in terms of how many and what angles they're at you can probably buy. Some may be more difficult to find than others. And in addition to having the various outlets around the edges you can also get them with the holes in the back and that's useful say if you had it in a ceiling you have the wires and things coming down the top and then just looping through and going back out again common for lighting circuits. And on the top here we've got these two lugs. And again these are pre-threaded, these are actually M4, or 4 millimeter metric threads, and these are used to secure the lid in position, or in some cases other things. Here's a typical lid just uh, placed on there, and the two screws would go in. Screws often made out of brass, and again these are M4, so question of just placing the screw in the hole, and then that would just tighten down to secure it in position. Now if you actually buy these, if you buy a box, then a box is all you get. You do not get a lid with it, you do not get any screws with it, and in fact you don't get anything at all other than the box itself. And the reasoning for this is because, although in quite a lot of cases you're just going to have this, say, as an intersection between, say, a run of conduit and drop down to a socket, you may well want a lid in that particular case. But there's plenty of other stuff that can actually go on the front of these. The most common and likely of which would be if you had, say, a lighting circuit, and this was up in the ceiling upside down, you can put this in so it's flush with the uh, finished surface of the ceiling, and then you can just put a ceiling rose directly over this, and these holes will line up with the holes in the ceiling rose because they're two inches apart, or 50 point whatever millimetres the metric equivalent is. So although you can get lids, lids are not the only thing which can fit on there. You can even get things like this, which is the same size as the top there, so it will go on there, and this has a threaded piece on the front, so you could have a piece of conduit coming out of there, as well as of course going in the side as well. And there's the various other things you can get to fit here. You could also get socket outlets and uh, switches at one time, which actually fitted directly on there as well. So you are going to need to buy some screws to go with it. Like I said, these are M4. These are six millimeters in length, which is ideal just to go the surface there, just to fix on the lid or whatever. And the other thing to note here is another hole in the back, which is also threaded as an M4. There's a closer look there. And the purpose of this one is so you can connect a tag here, an earth wire, normally just with a crimped uh, ring tail on the end. This screw will then go through the hole, and that's where you can connect the metalwork to earth using an appropriate uh, wire there. And it's slightly raised so that on the back, see that the actual thing has a recess, and that's when, when you put the screw in, it allows the screw to go through, but it won't actually stick out beyond the back of this piece here, so that could be flush against the wall, but it still gives you the space so you can actually get the screw in there, tighten it down properly. If this was flush or some moron bought screws of the wrong length, then when you went to tighten it up and it was on the wall, it would actually push against the wall and then try and press this away from the wall and cause make a horrible mess. So when buying this stuff, bear in mind that if you order a box or a box of boxes or whatever, that's all you're going to get. If you want things like lids and screws and all the other bits and pieces, well, you just have to order those separately. And the other thing you can get, in particular with uh, relation to the lids, you can actually get a rubber gasket which goes between the lid and the box. So when clamped down, of course, it provides a waterproof seal, which may be useful when this stuff is outside. Now for attaching the conduit to boxes, this is a single box you'd fix in a wall to of course they've got a socket or switch or something on the front, and you will need some of these and probably one of these. Now this is a fairly standard uh, wall box, this is a type which will be recessed in the wall and then plastered flush to the face of that. These have various knockouts by default and you just knock out the appropriate one you would want. This is a 20mm hole which means this 20mm brass bushing will fit through there no problem. And again it all fits up with the 20mm conduit as well. Now these have a smooth inner surface and actually have a nice rounded edge here so that your wires won't get damaged when they're pulled through. 
This is a coupler. Again, it's just another piece of the uh, steel here, threaded inside. And of course, one of these will obviously screw on there like that. And the idea is that you would put this through the hole in the box and then attach the coupler on the outside. And then your threaded conduit will, of course, thread in the other end like that. Now, there's a practical problem here in that this is only a 20 millimeter box, or 25 millimeter box rather. And as you can see, the 20 millimeter conduit is basically the full width of that. So, although these do physically fit, it's not a good idea to do that because when you come to plaster this in, you've got literally about a 2 millimeter veneer of plaster over the face of that. So, probably not the best uh, size to use. Now, this is a 35 millimeter box, and the difference here is that there's a considerable gap here on the front, so the actual uh, hole is set back from the edge. But the deal will be attaching it will be pretty much the same. Pick the hole you want to pick out there, break through the uh, hole that we want, take the brass bushing, that would fit through from the inside, and note here then there's quite a big gap between the bushing and the front there, so obviously more space to get the things in. Place the coupler on the outside, and then your actual conduit would thread in the other end of there. So you'll end up with something like that. So this will be uh, flush in the wall. This will have just a channel cut in the wall, and then this tag will be under the floor or whatever, going off to the next outlet box or wherever else. Now in terms of this bushing here, you do need to just tighten these up extremely well, because in most cases you're going to be using this as the actual earth for the actual fitting, so you need a good tight connection here. And of course you need to tighten it up, and you're not going to get a normal spanner in there. So what you need to get is one of these, which it says here is a bush wrench. This is one style, there is another style which has a sort of a V-shaped thing on the end, but they don't tend to work all that well. It's got two parts at the end, one is for the 20mm and the other is for the 25 again by far the most common sizes. And in terms of tightening up, then it's a question of placing this over the edge of the bushing in there, and so it just fits over like that. And then you can just tighten it up with the tool there. So, not uh, just probably tighten, so this will be uh, under the floor here, and then that's where the plastering. And note you've got quite a good step there on the face, so this is not going to be sort of literally right up against the face of the plaster and causing it to crack. Now there are other types of couplers you get here. There's one called a flanged coupler, which is a similar design, except the head is actually flared out and might give a better connection on certain types of fitting. But again, you don't have to use that. It's just a question of whatever is most appropriate. Now bushes come in usually a couple of different lengths, exactly the same size inside and everything, but just the thread length is somewhat shorter or longer, depending on what's appropriate for whatever you're screwing it into. Generally the longer ones are more useful. And although they're fairly rare, you can also get uh, female bushes, which are the same kind of idea, except the thread is on the inside. And these, of course, will fit over the uh, male ones like that, although, of course, that's pretty much useless because that doesn't really achieve anything. But nevertheless, they do exist. Now, in theory, you could put a female bush in there and then put the conduit up to it. The problem is it leaves a rather strange arrangement there, and you have to cut it fairly short. Another possible use for these is where you've got an open end, you can actually put one over the top there, and that will just put a much smoother edge on there, so uh, of course you don't have the sharp bit showing, but again you're not going to be doing that because the end of the uh, thing should also be screwed into a particular box. So uh, yeah, they do exist, but in the real world not a huge amount of use there. Now the next item are these, which are locking rings. There's two stars available, this is just the uh, cheaper Matic uh, hexagonal ones. And you can also get these nice uh, milled edge ones, which generally look a lot better. And the purpose of these is uh, if you've got the end of your conduit here, and you're going to thread on the box, again, you want to make sure that it's actually done up properly and tightly, so you can turn that around there, and then when you get to the end of the thread, you can of course just uh, grunt that down a bit further until it's as tight as it can be. But of course there's a bit of a problem here, and just to zoom out there, if you're going to place this, say, flat on a wall, then of course at the moment we've got the conduit there just sticking up at some ridiculous angle. And of course you might actually want it so that the conduit was flat against the wall, which has been fairly more likely. Of course that could lead to this actually being loose, depending on exactly where you put it. So the idea of the locking ring 
is to take the ring, place that onto the thread first, then you can tighten down the actual conduit box. Uh, in this case that's reasonably flat and then if you tighten the ring down onto the end of the box that will actually clamp it in position and then you don't have the situation of either it being loose or of course sticking up at a uh, silly angle. So if it's say there for example you can then tighten the ring down and then that will lock that into position. Not necessarily compulsory to use because if there's no bend immediately beyond of course it doesn't actually matter you can just tighten it down as far as it will go. But certainly if you've got sort of various things where it's got to go around a curve or something with another box say at the top there then that's quite a useful item to have. Functionally they work the same it's just the round ones look better because they've got the milled finish rather than just these nasty square or hexagonal varieties. Now when it comes to actually fixing this to the wall you will need some of these. These are saddles which attach the conduit to the wall. These normally go in two parts so there's a piece here with a single hole that's what we go on the wall and then once that is on the wall the conduit goes here and then the piece goes over the top there. This has some sliding arrangement there and then you just tighten up the screws to secure that to the wall as required. Now this is a fairly standard one it's just basically a stamped out uh, pressed metal there. You can also get ones like this which have a cast base and again the piece goes over the top it's just a uh, stamped out item. Same idea there's just a single hole in the middle. The difference here is that there's more space between the actual wall and the conduit so if you put one of those on there it will obviously move it away from the wall slightly so you've got more space behind and you can get a couple of styles of these. This is the smaller one you can get one to actually stick it out from the wall a considerable distance. The uh, only thing with these is to remember that you have to fix these to the wall before you install the conduit because of course the fixing screw is in the middle so once the conduit's in place you can't actually get to it so it's a question of put these on the wall first then install the conduit and the various boxes and then these go over the top afterwards to secure it in position. So look there metal conduit and the various tools and other things that go with it and in terms of installing this it's important to note that uh, when you're going to be doing this the whole idea of this stuff is that you install the entire conduit system first and this means all the boxes and the end bits and the junction things and whatever else and if it was going to be plastered in the wall you have all the plastering done or whatever else and then once that's done you would then return and then actually draw the wires and things through it afterwards. It is definitely not a case of doing bits of it and trying to thread the wires through and put boxes on the end with wires in there and all of that. So it's just a one step first and then the wiring actually goes in as an entirely separate thing later. And of course this means it has to be installed properly so you can actually draw all the wires in. We don't have sort of dead ends and uh, right angle boxes buried in the wall and whatever because of course that would make it impossible. This also has a big advantage that at a later date it's very easy to then remove the wiring and make changes to it so you don't actually have to start digging the place apart. Now Steel Conduit is quite an expensive system to install mainly because of the time involved and also the parts of course generally cost more than not bothering but it is a high quality choice and something which uh, probably should be used a lot more often. Now of course in other episodes we'll have a look at the uh, various tools and things in more detail actually how to use them and just one point for the end of this Although this is a threaded type of conduit there is a horrid system available which you can get called Conlock and it's basically along the same lines, same sort of size and everything but you don't have to thread the ends. The boxes have a little grub screw in the top and they're not threaded so you just shove it in and then sort of tighten it down with a wrench or something to fix it. Much quicker to do and you don't have to thread the ends but unfortunately it's a bit of old crap because the fact it's not threaded means you're just relying on that tiny little grub screw so in theory it might have a sensible connection between but in theory maybe not. It's not going to be waterproof because there's a slip fit between the various components and it's certainly not gas tight either which of course may be relevant in some installations so although it exists I would not recommend buying that. Its only advantage is it's a quicker way of installing it but unfortunately it's also a nasty and horrible way of doing it as well. So, so we'll have a look at the other things next time but until then thanks for watching.